Recently, I've been doing a few things using the programming language C. And I also really wanted to make some sort of game in a low-level programming language again. And after a friend mentioned he wanted to make a program in C, which checks button timings as a training for a game, I suggested he could implement some ASCII art to show success or something, because he planned to purely use the terminal. This made me think of how far you could go with just using ASCII art and different kinds of text. The idea lingered in my mind and soon enough I started experimenting with it. If you ever experimented with printing characters to the console or using the console in general, you should have noticed something pretty soon. Printing characters is slow. Clearing the whole screen and reprinting every character is just not feasible. I needed a way to refresh certain areas of the screen while ignoring the rest. That was rather easy. You probably already know that if you print, for example, this sequence, you can change the color of the text. I figured out that you can use similar escape sequences to move the text cursor. Like this, I can for example print this text with a different offset line for line without refreshing a screen. I made a struct to store the current cursor position and wrote some utility functions, which used exactly those escape sequences to move the cursor by a specific amount and to set the cursor to any desired position. If I then used a normal print, the text cursor position wouldn't match the actual text cursor position anymore. Therefore, I wrote a custom print function, which keeps track of the printed characters and even line breaks. Line breaks actually work a little bit different because instead of using an actual line break, I manually moved the text cursor to where I started printing one line below. With these utility functions done, as a simple proof of concept, I made this beautiful spiral. Okay, I don't really think it looks good, but it was just a proof of concept anyway. And that was basically just the beginning of it all. What did I add next? Circles. Well, colliding circles to be exact. The collision script is extremely terrible. It basically sets the movement direction of A to A minus B and the movement direction of B to B minus A. Along with that, the velocities are swapped. That's exactly how I did it in my scratch game, but here it was a lot easier. What was a little more difficult though was the rendering. Or to be exact, each character is roughly twice as high as wide, so I need to scale the width of everything by two. I need to scale width, position, collision forces. I guess I figured it out though. Also, the collisions are pretty bad and unrealistic. For example, if you were to play billiard with them, if you shoot a white circle into the triangle of other circles, only one of the other circles would finally move because the forces are swapped and not split up and divided equally. Also, the rendering of the circles is pretty bad for the performance too, because I basically calculate the circles by using sine and cosine for the x and y positions of each character for 15 different angles for each circle. Furthermore, I needed an interface for the user. The user should be able to interact with circles. I wanted to easily change the circle's force without restarting the program. I thought, wouldn't it be nice to be able to drag them? And with that, I started working. The Windows.h library, which I also used to get the character width and height of the console window, provided a function to get the mouse pointer position. The pointer position ranged from 0 to 1920 on the x-axis and from 0 to 1080 on the y-axis, matching the screen pixels. The text cursor instead ranged from 0 to about 300, describing the character amount of the console. I wrote a rather simple mapping function, which was surprisingly easy. The problem is, I don't know where the console window is located and how much of the screen the console window actually fills. Therefore, I had to add this configuration screen at the start. With that, I could actually track the mouse pointer position and with that settled, interactions were fairly easy too. If I click an empty space, it spawns a new circle. If I click on the circle, the circle's momentum stops and I start rendering a line between the circle and the mouse pointer. On release, I calculate a vector from pointer position to circle, which will be applied as a force to the selected circle. I used to catch the signal Ctrl plus C to stop the game loop and free the memory from the dynamic list, but the event system I used for click detection catches those signals, and since I didn't want to work with that, I implemented a clickable button to quit. There was nothing fancy really, one custom print for the visuals, hardcore that hover detection with manually set positions, and a custom unclick 
click function. It was not scalable at all, but it worked. I needed something better though. I even thought of having containers such as vboxes or hboxes to store UI elements. I also didn't want to have to manually check if the mouse pointer is above it for each button. I didn't even want to manually set the width or even write how the button should look. Therefore, I made this improved button script. It might not be pretty or fast, but it works. What it does is, it allows you to create a button by specifying the desired position along with a margin and description, which can even use line breaks. You can also write L, C or R in curly brackets before the description to change the alignment of the text inside the button. Furthermore, you can add a function which will be executed on click and a default color along with a hover color. This script allowed me to easily create a list which contains all buttons. I could even align one button with another one, which basically acts as an H or a V box. When testing, I sometimes got this weird bug where circles aren't clear properly. I still do sometimes. And I also still have a lot of other weird bugs. But this weird bug actually showed me something very interesting. One time, instead of not clearing the circles, it set the background color to something else. I was aware that setting the background color was possible, but didn't think of that before. Using what I've learned from this bug, I rewrote most code to use different background colors instead of characters. This made it look more like maybe even a game or something. I mean, it was still a low quality game, but this would actually make it possible to make a pixel art game or an actually physics engine. The possibilities are pretty much endless. This is basically as far as I got, and I feel like it's just the beginning. Making all of this in C is pretty annoying because I still don't have classes, interfaces, parameter, overload, and all those nice things, but I will get it to work. It's still a lot better than Scratch. Maybe I'll actually make a little adventure game or something. I really want to continue this, but I also have other things to develop, so I don't know how much time I will put into this. I actually didn't even start this project with a devlog in mind, but since it kind of stopped me from working on firefight training, I thought you might as well see what I'm doing. And who knows, maybe this will be a fun game in the end. With that said, I'll let you do something productive or whatever, and I'll see you in the next devlog, which will be hopefully rather soon. So see you later, bye!